Hello there, it's Sarah from Paper Lovely. Thanks for joining me today. I'm going to be working with the Spellbinders March Large Die Kit, but before I get started, I wanted to give you a quick look at how I store my die set. So this is actually the small kit for March. I'm showing you there that I've trimmed off the top of it just to make sure it will fit down inside my pouch, and this is the same type of pouch that I use for my stamp set. I then use these little Velcro dots just to help keep it a little more secure. So I'll stick one down and then the other on top of it and then fold that over. That way I make sure it matches up great. And then I will go ahead and add my dies in there, fold it over, and then I store that right along with my stamps. So here I'm just giving you a quick look at what was included in the large die kit. It has this really great pop-up along with some pretty flowers and then there are also two sentiments uh, that you can add on the outside of that pop-up piece. I'm going to give you a quick look at how I put these flowers together. I'm just layering them. There's loads of different ways you can combine all of these pieces. I generally stayed with these four types of flowers and then just mixed up my colors. And I'm just using my art glitter glue here, adding the tiniest little dot of glue and then placing each layer on top of the other. I used some cardstock from MFT for this uh, in whipped cream, bubble gum, poppy, orange zest, and jelly bean. And then I finished up with some from Paper Tray Ink in Simply Chartreuse and Summer Sunrise. Here I'm showing you how I cut out that pop-up piece. So you're going to want to cut this twice. And here I'm using um, Stormy Sea cardstock. That's from Paper Tray Ink. So I'm going to trim that out twice. And then there's this little piece that sort of acts as a stand. So you could do a standalone vase to hold your flowers and just stick that inside your card and fold it if you wanted to have that piece separate. I'm gonna trim out two of those as well. And then here I'm using some whipped cream cardstock and I'm gonna trim out the sentiment from me to you. So I've gone ahead and popped out all of the small little pieces from the insides and now I'm going to start putting together this pop-up piece. So you want to be careful where you're bending this. I actually bent mine in the wrong place on that first one there. You're just going to bend over those tabs. There's sort of some, it almost looks like a wood grain post. It's almost like a fence and there's a wood grain post on either side. So you want to make sure that you're bending that on the far side of that post. And one of them is going to have two folds and the other is going to have one. Uh, and then of course I've also bent the three tabs on the two little half circle pieces as well. So I'm adding some score tape to just one side of the pop-up pieces. And then I'll add some to the flaps on these little circles as well. And I'm going to place this together. So you want to turn it so that you have one that is the double folds matching up with a single fold on either side. And this way you're gonna have that double fold on both sides and it'll squeeze together really nicely when your card is uh, closed. Next, I'm gonna add my sentiment, just adding some art glitter glue behind there and I'll place that down on top. And now I'll go ahead and add these little stands on either side. So it matches up really nicely. All three of the tabs will match under the little dips on either side of the sort of fence pop-up piece. I'm gonna add one of those on each side of this. And there you can see how that will stand. Just making sure that everything's down nice and tight with my score tape. 
So I've grabbed some pattern paper from my stash. I think this is from a collection called Welcome Home. I will uh, link it below for you if I can find it. And I've trimmed that down to four by five and a quarter. And then here I'm gonna grab that same Stormy Sea cardstock and I'll stamp out that sentiment. This is from last month's uh, February's stamp set from the card kit that reads, thanks a bunch. And I've used my VersaFine Onyx Black ink for that. I'm gonna use the leftover script piece from the pattern paper I trimmed down on the front of my card. Go ahead and trim off that excess. And then I've gone ahead and just played around with some of these flowers as well as the leaves and I'm going to combine these together in a little bunch. I've got my sentiment there just for placement but I am going to eventually pop that up so that's not glued down yet. I'm just sort of leaving it there so I can see how the flowers will look around it once I place that down. Next to the back of my sentiment, I'm gonna add some foam tape. Then I decided I would add a little angle off to the side there. I'll peel away that backing and then place this down on the top of my card. For the inside, I'm gonna add this script pattern paper to the top of my folding card. I wanted to have that as a background, so if I left my card halfway open, you would have this pretty script behind the little flower garden that I'm gonna put in next. So I'm adding some art glitter glue to the bottom of these little half circles. And I've got my pop-up squeezed together there and I'm gonna fold the flaps up as best as I can. And then I'm gonna place that right in the center of my crease. Let's try and get that as centered as best as I can. And then once I'm happy with the placement, I will go ahead and fold my card. There you can see how the pop-up's gonna work. I'm just gonna make sure that's down nice and tight. So here I've grabbed some of the flowers that I placed on the stems and I've laid these out. I'm gonna glue some to the front and some to the back to give this even more dimension. And this will complete card number one. Uh, so I just wanted to show you there, it does fit down inside a regular envelope. It's a little thicker than usual, but it still fits great. So here for card number two, I'm again using a piece of pattern paper from that Welcome Home paper pad. I'm gonna add some ATG to the back of that. I wanted to place this so I only had about a quarter of an inch along the side and the bottom showing. So I'm just gonna add a bunch on the back and then I will place that down on top of my card base. And that is made from Paper Tray Ink Summer Sunrise. Of course, I'll go ahead then and trim off the excess. Here I've got three flowers that I've put together. I'm gonna add a little bit of art glitter glue behind that and I will go ahead and place them down directly on my card front.
Again, for my sentiment, I'm going to use that Thanks a Bunch from last month's card kit. I actually ended up using this on all three of the cards. You can always use thank you cards. Um, but this time I'm going to emboss it. I've grabbed some MFT black licorice cardstock and I'm going to use some Versamark ink and I will go ahead then emboss that with Simon Says Stamp Fine Detail White. I've gone ahead here and trimmed down my sentiment. I'm gonna again add a little angle and I pop that up here with some foam tape. I'm just gonna place that right across here leaving a little bit of the bottom of those stems peeking out from below. For the inside, I'm using another stamp from last month's stamp set. I really loved last month's stamp set. Um, and this reads, you are simply wonderful. I'm as usual on my Nina panel trimmed to four by five and a quarter, and I stamped that using my VersaFine Onyx Black ink. Here I've got about a quarter inch of some black licorice cardstock. I'm gonna add some score tape behind that and I'll place that along the bottom of this panel. Go ahead then and trim off the excess. I'll add some ATG to the back and then place that on the inside of my card base. And that will complete card number two. So here for card number three, I'm gonna create a shaker card and I want the actual flower portion to be my shaker. So I'm gonna start out here with a Nina panel trimmed to four by five and a quarter. And then I've laid out five of these stems and I'm just gluing these down with some art glitter glue. Then once I have all of those in place, I'm gonna cut out what are going to be the windows for my shaker. So I'm gonna use the tulip die, the daisy die, and then I think it's a black eyed Susan die. It's the one with the center at the top and then all of the petals around it. And I'm just gonna go through and create all of my windows. So here you'll see, I did wanna have um, those little pieces sticking out of the top of the tulip. So I first cut the tulip and then I added in the second die and that way I've got the whole um, shape and everything is lined up perfectly. So once I have all of my windows cut out, I'm gonna add a rectangle of score tape around them. Then I'll peel away the backing. I'm gonna place down some acetate. So now I'm gonna go ahead and separate each of these out so that I can add a different color behind each flower. I'm using my eighth inch score tape and I first created a rectangle all the way around them. And now I'm just gonna go in and create some divisions between each flower. I'm gonna be using the Martha Stewart shaker beads that I used uh, in one of my last videos for the bunny shaker. And they're really small and I don't wanna use more of them than I have to. So I'm also gonna go in here with some additional foam tape and just fill in these sections a little bit so that way I can use less of my beads when I fill in for the flowers. And because I'm using those micro beads, I only need to do one layer of the foam tape.
Now once I have those smaller sections filled in a little bit more, I'm just going to take my foam tape and fill in the bottom using some straight rows all the way across. Next, I'll fill in with my micro beads, and the colors I'm using are Fire Opal, Kunzite, and Garnet. Once I have all those filled in, I'm going to carefully peel away the backing on the foam tape just from the top here. Then I'll grab some computer paper, I'm going to place that down, and then I'll trim around the excess. This is a really great way when you're using something tiny like this or if you're going to use several different colors and you want it to be, you know, kept in their own little places, um, this is a great way to be able to get that down and then also be able to place this on the front of your card base and get it nice and straight. Next, I'm going to add a few details here to those smaller flowers. I've trimmed out some yellow centers. This is using that same summer sunrise color. I'll add a little dot of art glitter glue and place those down on top. I wanted these to look like they were peeking out of a flower box, so I've grabbed a leftover piece. I believe this was the back of that black and white check that I used on the last card. I added a little bit of ATG to the back of that. I'm going to place that along the bottom here and then, of course, trim off the excess. I'm going to stamp out that same sentiment. Thanks a bunch. I'm again using Stormy Sea from Paper Tray Ink and using my VersaFine Onyx Black Ink. And then similarly to the last card, I'm going to use that You Are Simply Wonderful sentiment, again using my Onyx Black Ink. I'll add some ATG to the back of that window that I covered over with the computer paper, peel away the backing on my foam tape, and then place that down on the top of my card base. This card base is also made from Stormy Sea cardstock. For my sentiment, I decided I wanted to center that there on the flower box. I'm going to go ahead and create a banner edge on either end, and then I will place that down using some ATG. Finally, I'll add some ATG to my inside panel and place that on the inside of my card base. And that will complete card number three. Here are a few close-ups of the finished cards. In the description box below, you'll find my blog post which has additional photos and links to the supplies I used. If you enjoyed the video, please leave me a comment or a thumbs up and subscribe for more. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.